Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the comedy and romance movie titled, Coming to America. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Somewhere in Africa, in a land called Zamunda, an African prince is awakened by his alarm clock, an orchestra playing a nice melodic song. His Highness is wished good morning by some girls, and is also wished good morning by his servant. He asks his servant if he for once could use the bathroom by himself, getting the answer he's most amusing. Next up, he is helped with various things, like cleaning himself, brushing his teeth, and getting clothed. Later, he is asked by his servant if he's excited to meet his wife-to-be now that he's 21 years old, replying that he can't be excited about a woman he's never seen. At breakfast, his parents remark he looks sad, asking what's up. Akeem walks over to them, starting to explain he is tired over having to do nothing at all himself, and that walking on roses is too much. He says he wants to cook, and dress, and wipe his own backside, and choose his own wife. His father, King Jaffe explains it's natural to feel anxious about meeting his wife the first time. Suddenly, Akeem's good friend Semi walks in, asking if he's ready for his daily workout. They walk out, and later while training, they talk about his wife-to-be, and Semi remarks she only has to be beautiful with a pretty face, firm backside, and nice curves. Akeem replies he not only wants a beautiful wife, but someone who's actually intellectually challenging. Semi says it's tradition to have a fool as a wife, but Akeem says times must change. Next up, the royal wedding has begun, and the father to his queen-to-be presents his daughter. A spectacular show commences, and a lot of dancers fill the throne room. Suddenly they stop, and his queen-to-be called Imani appears, walking up to him. People think she's absolutely beautiful, but Akeem is not impressed as he's also interested in her as a person. Akeem asks to speak to her alone, and people are confused. He says he wants to get to know her a bit before they get married, asking her about herself. She answers she's been trained ever since she was born to serve him, and as Akeem asks her of her favorite food and favorite music, she only replies she likes whatever he likes and will do whatever he wants her to do. He asks her to bark like a dog, which she does, and then asks her to jump on one leg. Suddenly his father enters, and Akeem asks her to leave them. King Jaffe says he sees they are getting along. Akeem asks to talk to him, and the two go for a stroll. He tells his father he's not sure he's ready for the wedding. King Jaffe says they've never talked about it, but asks his son if he hasn't had sex with his bathers yet, which he himself has a lot of. Akeem says it's not about that, but that he's never left Samunda and wants to see the world. His father says he understands, saying he's right, that he may get out and see the world, enjoy himself, fulfill every erotic desire, but that in 40 days he will come back and marry Imani. King Jaffe gets back, telling everybody that the wedding will commence in 40 days, that they may go home. Akeem tells Semi to not tell anyone, but that he will go and find his own wife in America. Semi asks what's wrong with Imani, and he replies he wants a woman that's going to arouse his intellect as well as his loins. Next up, the two are flying to the land of the free, and specifically to Queens in New York, since they figure that's the best place to find a queen. Akeem tells his friend no one must know he is royalty, looking no different than the average man. He walks out and stops a cab. They are asked if they really want to go to Queens, and Akeem is very positive that's what he wants. They arrive, and people on the street can't help but look at them. While they talk to a man about renting a room, all their bags are stolen. Akeem says he wants meager accommodations, and the man says he's come to the right place, saying they only got one bathroom on the floor, and says this room is the one they seek, and Akeem is very happy. Later, they walk out and see people wearing their clothes. Akeem says they probably should change into New York clothes, and next up, the two look like they were born there. The two enter a hair salon, and Akeem gets a quick haircut before they go to find his queen. They enter a bar, talking to different women to find someone that seems like a good prospect, but all seem very freaky, or strange, or have too high demands on the type of man they want, or are just not even a woman. On their way home, they ask the man owning the hair salon where they can find nice women, getting the answer that they'll be able to find some good and clean women at the Black Awareness Rally here tonight. Next, they are entering the rally, listening to a man praying, talking about God and joy. Later, a man named Cleo McDowell who has organized the festivities, asks his daughter Lisa to not forget to mention their restaurant in her speech, which she says she won't do. She seems like an educated and intelligent woman, and Akeem immediately gets interested. She asks to get donations to rebuild Lincoln Park, and while her boyfriend in the audience doesn't give anything, Akeem seems to be over-generous without understanding it. He remarks he must get to know her. Next up, the two are asking for a job at McDowell's, and Cleo tells them they'll mop the floors and clean the windows. The two have however never done it before. Later, 
Akeem tries to introduce himself to Lisa, but his talk doesn't go so smoothly, saying she can call him if she needs urgent disposal of her garbage, that in fact when she thinks of garbage she should think of Akeem. Suddenly, Lisa's boyfriend drives up to McDowell's in his car. Cleo is happy to see him, offering a free milkshake. As Lisa sees him, she remarks that someone yesterday donated a large amount of money to save Lincoln Park, asking if it was him, and Daryl says he did it gladly, and she gets happy. Daryl asks Akeem to take care of his milkshake on their way out. Next day, one of the workers at McDowell's remarks that he doesn't know how it is in Africa, but here the rich guys get all the chicks, and Akeem replies that he must work really hard. The worker says no way, that Daryl just lives off his father's invention, that you can't compete with somebody like that. Some time later, at the home of the McDowell's, Lisa's sister Patrice is dancing as somebody knocks on the door. It's a delivery for Lisa. As the two open it, they are shocked to see diamond earrings and a note saying it's not from Daryl. Next day, Semi tells Akeem to tell Lisa he sent her the $500,000 earrings so she can fall into his arms and they can leave this godforsaken place. Akeem says he won't, that he's got a better plan. Later, Lisa introduces Akeem to her sister Patrice. They ask if he wants to join them for the St. John's basketball game, and he gladly accepts. Lisa says that's good, then they can have a double date. At the game, Akeem acts as if he can follow the game, but in actuality really doesn't understand it. Daryl mocks Akeem, asking what games they play in Africa, if they play Chase the Monkey. Akeem says they play soccer, and Daryl says he doesn't like games where you don't use your hands. Suddenly, Patrice starts using her hands, playing around, and Akeem stands up quickly, excusing himself and leaves. In the queue to the bathrooms, a man starts bowing and saying this is the greatest day in his life. Akeem leaves, but the man runs after, asking for a photo with him. Lisa and Daryl appear, just as the man remarks he'll cherish this experience for the rest of his life. They ask who that was, and Akeem says it was just someone he met in the restroom. Some day later, Akeem overhears Daryl telling Lisa she should quit her job, that he'll take care of her, and give her anything she wants. She says she likes her job, and doesn't want anything. As he goes to bring some coffee, Lisa asks Akeem to sit down and take a break, excusing Daryl for being obnoxious at the basketball game. Akeem says Daryl can't help it. She remarks he's unusual, having never seen someone take so much pride in mopping the floor. Akeem quotes Nietzsche, saying one must first learn to stand and walk before flying, impressing her. Suddenly, a man enters the restaurant, yelling at the workers to bring him all the cash in the cash register, and Daryl is seen hiding. Akeem picks up the mop, excuses himself for a moment, walks up to the robber and tells him to lower his weapon. The robber continues with his threats and yells at Akeem to back off, and Akeem makes some fast moves. Semi jumps over the counter and picks up the gun, and the robber gives up. Later, Cleo thanks them for what they did today, inviting them to a get-together at his house this weekend, and Akeem is absolutely thrilled. The weekend comes, and Cleo asks them to park people's cars outside the house. He brings Akeem into the house, saying they will also have to work in the bar later tonight, showing him what he's supposed to do. Cleo tells a story about his life, explaining it took him 30 years to be able to afford a house like this, telling Akeem he too can achieve that in 20 or 30 years of hard work, and Akeem compliments him, saying the house is very fine. Later that night, as the party is going and Akeem keeps everybody's glasses full, Daryl tells Akeem he was just about to stop that robber when he and Semi did it. Daryl remarks his philosophy about women is similar, that you must be aggressive with them and tell them what to do, saying that women like that. A few moments later, Cleo suddenly walks up with Daryl in front of everybody, asking to get everybody's attention. He says he has some very good news, that Daryl just popped the big question, and that Lisa happily accepted. Lisa is not happy, and angrily brings Daryl out to speak with him alone, telling him that he and her father just can't plan her life without her, and then leaves. Later, Akeem brings her a jacket, and she asks him to keep her company. He asks if she's fine, and she explains that she is, but that she's not gonna get pressured into marriage. Akeem says he knows how she feels, that people arrange a lot of marriages in his country too. She says she got so furious in there, and asks if she's overreacting. Akeem responds that the first reaction is often the correct one, and she remarks she finds him very easy to talk to. Next day, Semi doesn't want to go to work, saying he can't live in filth like this. Akeem says fine, that he may clean their room up, but that he must go to work to not sabotage his relation to the McDowells. After work, Lisa says she feels like she owes him a favor, and invites Akeem to dinner, saying Patrice will be there. Akeem says he'd like to show his house instead, saying he'll cook for her, and she gets a bit surprised and happy. He warns her however that his home is very poor, and she remarks she doesn't care about that. As they get home, 
Akim sees how Semi has renovated, and he gets shocked. He excuses himself, getting angry at Semi, saying he'll kill him if he has ruined his relationship with Lisa, taking Semi's money so he can't cause more mischief. Akim walks out to Lisa and says he's sorry, but that they will have to eat out tonight. As they are going for a stroll, Akim gives the money to a homeless person. Suddenly, the man called Mortimer calls on his brother Randolph, telling him to look. Randolph remarks happily that they are back. As Lisa and Akim are eating dinner, the two run up, thanking Akim very, very much. Lisa remarks people love him, saying he has some glow around him, and a rare positive attitude. As they are handed the bill, Akim wants to pay for it, but Lisa says she'd hope he stopped worrying about being poor, and let her pay, remarking that if she wanted a wealthy guy, she'd be with Daryl by now. Without replying, Akim asks if she'd like to dance, and she happily says yes. While dancing, the two start kissing. Somewhere else, Semi has written a note to King Jeff to kindly send $300,000 because they're out of money. A woman reads the message, and thinking he's out of his mind, she asks if he shouldn't just ask for a cool $1 million instead. Later, Semi is surprised to see Patrice in his apartment, who asks what's going on. Some time later, Akeem walks in on Sammy and Patrice. She leaves, calling Sammy his highness. Akeem asks Sammy who he himself is supposed to be if he is the prince, and Sammy answers the servant. Next day, Lisa says she's going to the museum with Akeem, which Cleo doesn't like, asking why she can't marry Daryl, and she replies he only likes him because he's rich. Meanwhile, Akeem is called on Mr. Thompson, the apartment owner, and asks to change their apartment to something shittier. Thompson says they can have his apartment, a real shithole, and he'll move up here. As Akeem leaves to meet up with Lisa, suddenly an escort appears in Queens, and out steps King Jeff. Jeff walks into the place Sammy and Akeem live and knocks on Mr. Thompson's door. As Jeff walks in asking where his son is, he sees Akeem in a photo with the text employee of the month. Thompson says they live downstairs, and as Jeff knocks on their door, Sammy screams as he sees Jeff. He opens again, and Jeff tells Sammy he'll be punished for letting his son Akeem work, that he'll be confined to their royal suite at Waldorf Astoria, and will be bathed thoroughly by these women. Sammy gets happy rather than sad. At the museum, Akeem suddenly sees himself, and kisses Lisa to distract her, telling her they should leave. At McDowell's, King Jeff suddenly appears, and as Jeff says he's looking for Prince Akeem, Cleo says he's out with his lovely daughter Lisa. They leave some money for his troubles, and as Cleo sees Akeem on the note, he suddenly loves Akeem. As Lisa and Akeem arrive at Akeem's apartment and he sees the flowers on the ground, Akeem says they should go home to her instead. They arrive at Lisa's home, and Cleo is more than happy that the two are getting along well. Cleo runs and calls on King Jeff that they are here. Soon after, Someone knocks on the door, and Cleo seeing it's Daryl, yells at him saying Lisa doesn't like him anymore, throwing the door in his face. As Cleo gets some snacks, Akeem tells Lisa he will explain things later, but that he must go and sort some things out. When Cleo comes back, seeing Akeem is gone, Lisa asks what's going on, and Cleo starts explaining she sure hit the jackpot this time, that Akeem is so rich he's literally got his own money. Akeem goes to see Semi, saying he needs him. At the McDowell's house, Cleo is more than happy to see the royals. Jeff demands to speak to Lisa. In her room, he explains to Lisa that Akeem already has a wife to be back in Zamunda, and Lisa Satin storms out, saying she must get some air. Cleo asks what happened, and Jeff says Akeem can't be interested in some lowlife girl from Queens. Cleo gets angry, and Jeff's wife asks why Akeem couldn't be interested in her. Jeff says he'll compensate him, bringing out a check for $2 million. Cleo says no one can buy his daughter off, and Akeem's mother Queen Aeolian tells Jeff to apologize to Cleo immediately, which he refuses. Suddenly Akeem and Semi appear, and Patrice asks what everybody is yelling about. Seeing the Queen hugging Akeem, she gets confused, having thought Semi was the prince, and yells in disappointment why Lisa always gets the good ones. Akeem asks where Lisa is. Akeem's mother asks if he cares for Lisa, and Akeem replies he loves her. His mother says she ran out, telling him to go after her. King Jeff forbids Akeem to do it but then Aeolian tells Jeff to put a sock in it, saying their son is in love. Upstairs, Daryl knocks on Patrice's window, and she tells him he must get out of those wet clothes. Akeem runs after Lisa down into the subway, and just makes it into it in time. Lisa tells Akeem she doesn't want him and his stupid luxury gifts. Akeem follows her, saying he loves her, but she doesn't believe him, replying he's got a wife to be in Zamunda and has lied about being rich. Akeem explains he came to America to find his bride and wanted his bride to love him for who he was and not for his money. She starts to understand his position. Akeem asks her to marry him, and the people on the subway tell her to say yes. 
Almost in tears, she says she can't and runs away. Some time later, Semi tells Akeem that at least they learned how to make French fries, after which they head home to Zamunda. In the car home, Aeolian has a serious discussion with Jeff, telling him that their tradition of forced marriage is a stupid tradition, and that he who is the king, should be able to change it. The wedding day is here, and Akeem's wife-to-be is walking down the aisle to powerful music. Akeem is ready to do his duty, but then becomes extremely happy seeing it's Lisa, and they start kissing all too soon in the wedding process. Afterwards, it's party time, and people are extremely happy to see the newly wedded. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.